so welcome to Jima Tube. Today we are here to know about another interesting topic from our professor Nondini Chatterjee, who is the professor of Department of Medicine in SSKM hosp uh, Hospital, regarding how to write a case report. It's uh, now we have to know that scientific documentation is an art that is to be mastered by diligent practice. The novice writer may begin writing to uh, begin learn uh, learning to write scientific treaties with the case report only. So before we uh, start, let's welcome the Professor Nandini Chatterjee, Madam. Madam, welcome. And uh, she is the associate editor of JIMA, Journal of Indian Medical Association, and the editor of Bengal Physician Journal from API West Bengal branch. Welcome, Madam. So with Thank that, you. let's dive into the question that we have we have for you regarding the case, how to write a case report. So before we start, what is a case report and what are the types of case reports? Thank you, Tanuka. Uh, first, let me share the screen. I'll answer your questions and side by side show some slides so that it will be better for understanding. So a case report is a detailed report of the signs, symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, follow-up and interpretation of an individual patient. And it can be of various types, like a case report may report a rare disease or it can document a novel manifestation of a well-known disease. Sometimes mechanism of disease may be elucidated by way of a case report. And at other times, various adverse or beneficial effects of drugs may be described by a case report. Okay. Okay, so with that, uh... I really want to ask, uh, there's a question, burning question in my mind. What is the purpose of a case report? And what are the pitfalls of the case report? Yes. Basically, case reports are anecdotal sharing of an individual experience. And it helps in gaining new knowledge so that we can have a pattern recognition of any disease process. At times, some new recommendations on therapy may also be given through a case report. The problem with the case report is that in the hierarchy of evidence, it occupies the lowest rung. That is why it has a poor citation value and it has no effect on the impact factor of a journal. So often, some journals may not be so interested in publishing a case report. Okay, that was very informative, madam. Even I didn't know many things in that. So uh, will you uh, elaborate a, a bit on the individual components of a case report? Yes. Now, when somebody is starting to write a case report, he or she should have in mind a basic template, which is nothing but the various sections under which a case report is to be written. First, uh, an appropriate title for the case report is to be chosen, followed by all these sections. A, an abstract with keywords, introduction, the case proper, discussion, conclusion, references, and legends. Okay, ma'am. With uh, that, uh, can you uh, just uh, tell me uh, that uh, a few words about the title? How to choose a title and how to write a title? Yes, definitely. Now, the title is the first thing that you decide why you sit and write a case report. It is important that the title should be brief and concise, but it should give information. You should avoid any redundant or extra words like 
a unique case of or the first case of these things are better avoided. For example, here are two titles. You take the second, hemobilia, a rare presentation of intrabiliary hydratid disease. Here, as you see, there are no extra frill, frilly words, only information about the article that is following this title. Okay, so uh, how to submit in a scientific journal? Yes. This case, how to submit this kind of case reports in a scientific journal? How to submit such case reports in a scientific journal? Okay, before uh, submission to Toluca, I would like to uh, say a little elaborate about the individual components or sections under which the case report is to be written and then go on to uh, submission proper. So as I said, the abstract, that is the first section, should be limited within 100 words or less. Various journals, they give instructions to author regarding the uh, word limits. And this is usually the standard limit. The abstract for a case report is unstructured usually, which means that it is not divided into any of the sections. Like in original articles, we often divide the abstract as introduction, methodology, results, etc. But in case of case reports, we do not do that. The abstract should be brief, but it should be self-sufficient. Why? Because when a person is searching the internet, then he will give some keywords and find the abstract. So the abstract will give him more or less the information about the whole case. Here is an example of a paragraph, which is the unstructured abstract of a case report. Regarding the introduction, it also should be concise and should attract the reader's attention. It should emphasize the uniqueness of the case and how this case is contributing to existing literature. When you come to the case proper, you chronologically describe the history, then give details about the clinical findings and ultimately discuss in a little the differential diagnosis. After that, you give details about the investigations, the imaging study, histopathology reports, and come to the final diagnosis. In another paragraph, you will write about your treatment and follow up. All negative findings should be given and the tables and figures also should be used to reveal the findings and help to compare using different methods. The discussion part of a case report is also very important where you essentially summarize all the features of the case and compare it with other case reports in literature. You explain the rationale for reporting this case and state the lessons essentially that are being uh, shown or that is being evident from this case. Any limitations in diagnosis and treatment of the case also should be mentioned. You may also give a new recommendation regarding management of this patient. Lastly, you conclude by emphasizing again the lesson or message that this case is showing and it should be within one paragraph. Legions should be provided, which essentially means the description of the tables and figures uh, that are given in this case report and you may acknowledge people who have helped you. Now I'm coming back to the question that how to submit the case report that you have written in a journal. Tonuka, uh, there is something about the references, should I Yes, of course, madam, we should know about the references also because quite often we are a bit confused how to write and how to state these references at the end of the case report because it is very important part of the case report. Yes. Uh, Could so you please elaborate? First, uh, yes, few lines about the references I should tell you. 
before I'll go for the submission, uh, in the references, you must not exceed or give too many references. Most journals limit number of references to be around 15. Now, these references should be relevant and they should help the reader if he is interested in having additional information. The references should follow the particular style that the journal has advocated. In most cases, it is the Vancouver style. Now, if uh, the writers want to know how a Vancouver style is to be followed, what he needs to do is to go to Google and type the word Vancouver style. And immediately the internet will show ki what is the process of properly writing a reference in the Vancouver style. So after the case report is fully written, all the sections are complete, then you think of submitting to a scientific journal. Now, every journal will have a section where there are instructions to the author. This has to be very carefully read and understood before you are submitting to a journal. You have to choose a particular journal which whose orientation is similar to your case report and then read through the instructions, especially regarding the format of writing, like the font type, font size, margins, spacing, all these are very important along with the word limit. After you have written down and according to the format of the journal, you then start making a checklist. What is that? The checklist contains the covering letter, the title page, the copyright form, the manuscript, a consent, and tables and figures. Before submitting, you just check that you have completed all these sections or not. Okay, madam, that was very informative for all the PG students and the undergraduate students who are trying to write a case report. So with that, we have the next question. What are publication ethics? Okay. Now, publication ethics are very important at any person who wants to publish an article, whether it be a case report or an original article, first must be aware that what are the ethical issues. Now, these ethical issues for original articles are more stringent for case report. What basically you must know is that firstly, consent. Your patient must give informed consent about the fact that you are going to publish his or her case in a journal. Number two, the confidentiality of the patient should be maintained. If you are giving photographs, then the eyes should be covered and his or her name or address or anything, any information which is personal should not be given in your case report. Number two is what is falsification or fabrication? It means that you are not going to appropriate information from somebody else's uh, writings or publications. Very important. You should not send the same case report simultaneously to two or three journals. You first send it to one journal if that journal rejects, then only can you send it to another journal, never simultaneously. And lastly, but very important, is the issue of plagiarism. Ma'am, as you have said in point number four, plagiarism, it's a new word for many of the us. And what can you just say some words about plagiarism and how to avoid it actually? Okay. Yes, as you have said, Tonuka, that the word seems un not very familiar, but what it means or what it is done is very, very familiar. What I mean is that plagiarism is the 
without taking consent or giving credit sometimes the work of one person is duplicated by another person that is called plagiarism but nowadays for almost all journals before they review a paper they will place that article through a plagiarism detection software and that software will detect the percentage of plagiarism in any article so usually most journals have a policy that around 10% to 15% plagiarism may be allowed for case report is 10% so beyond that the plagiarism is not acceptable there are two terms i will i would like to stress one is similarity another is plagiarism now similarity means essentially matching or overlapping of text however plagiarism is a larger area it means basically stealing of ideas text figure design data anything it's a broader term problem with this detection softwares are that sometimes scientific terminology or names of techniques may be considered as similarity now if this plagiarism is detected higher than 10% consequence is that your paper will be rejected the last two things that i have written that is usually not in the case of uh, case report but if it is a large trial that is being plagiarized or so then there may be a blacklisting of author as well so we have to avoid plagiarism how to do it we will not copy paste from any other article this is number one rule number two just spend a little time to express your thoughts in your own language not the language of some other author if you indeed want to quote somebody then you must acknowledge the source and cite the reference another good thing is before you are sending your article to any journal you yourself can use certain software tools and see how much similarity your article is showing and correct it before you are sending it to another journal thank you ma'am thank you for that uh, information it's very important to avoid plagiarism what are the tips for resubmission of a case report okay resubmission the question of resubmission comes when you have sent a case report to a journal and the journal has sent that article to different referees the referee will have certain questions for you now during resubmission basically you are answering the questions or queries put together by the referee so it is important that you politely respond to each point made by the reviewer and the answers or the changes that you are making in your own article should be highlighted yellow or any other color should be given so that the referee knows that where you have changed you can also make a box where you can uh, make a list of the questions or comments and give your response along with its location page number and line number etc this is a very systematic way somebody if if they read this box will get to know how much you have been able to answer the queries of the reviewer okay ma'am so we almost come to the end of this session by and there is a last question for you please help us with that what is a case series yes now a case series is just a uh, where you give a set of cases like a case report essentially is talking about one case whereas in a case series where cases have common characteristics 
related clinically or pathophysiologically, you can give them or club them together. Usually it is said that it should be at least more than four cases and less than 10 cases. So though it is not clearly written, this is the accepted version that a case series more than four cases, less than 10 cases. Problem is that it is different uh, from a meta-analysis because this case series, there is no research question and it is undesigned. But case series is accepted as a better evidence than a single case report. So uh, I would uh, like to summarize here that before writing, you must read various articles or case reports that will give you an idea of how a case report is written. You discuss with other authors. You have to practice writing. You should avoid long phrases and use simple words. Avoid repetition. Respect the word length. And look for journals that have issued calls for papers. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for enlightening us with uh, such an important part of how to write a case report because all the young these residents and all the young doctors all around uh, the our uh, institute and all over west bengal they and, and india also they are very keen to know how to write a case report because case report is becoming an essential part of day to day as we have to see patients so we have to do our academics and it's a very important part of our academics so thank you ma'am thank you so much for taking your time to enlighten us and help us in gmatu to get to know how to write a case report. Thank you so much, madam. Thank you. Thank you very much.